So, I'm going to continue now my discussion about equivalence classes and uh, how this leads to the notion of a quotient group. So, recall from uh, video on equivalence classes, um, an equivalence relation on a set is a relation where you can say if S is a set, we can say that two elements are equivalent and the, in order to be equivalent in equivalence relation it must satisfy that any element must be related to itself. If an element is related to A is related to B then B is related to A. If A is related to B, B is related to C then A is related to C. So, these are the properties of an equivalence relation. We, we discussed uh, some examples of this and the most important example in our situation would be the relation uh, defined by a subgroup of a group. So, that I will recall in a minute, but uh, an equivalence relation the main fact that I want you to recall from that video and that we will use today is an equivalence relation an equivalence relation partitions. So, an equivalence relation on a set S partitions S. So, uh, I discussed this in all those examples of equivalence relations, but if S is a given like this, you consider equivalence classes. What are equivalence classes? So, equivalence classes are simply if you fix uh, for A in S, equivalence class is all elements in S which are equivalent to B. Whether array A is related to B or B is related to A is not important because of the reflexive property of you know, the symmetric property of equivalence relation. So, these are the equivalence relations uh, classes. So, you have A1, A2 and A3 and so on. And the important property is either if you are given two uh, equivalence classes, they are given two equivalence classes let us say A the class of A and the class of B, then we have two possibilities then one either the class is equal to itself each other the class A is equal to the class B. So, they are identical or they are disjoint. They have nothing in common. So, this is a very strong condition right. You have either disjoint sets or they are identical. So, if you take dis distinct uh, classes, if A 1 class is same different from A 2, they cannot have anything in common. So, you can cover the entire set like this. So, this is how a set partitions an equivalence class on a set partitions that set. So, the most important example for us and uh, all the examples that we have looked at are examples really of this example with different groups and different subgroups. Fix a group. So, fix a group G and a subgroup H. of G. Fix a group G and a fix a subgroup H of G. So, we say that I think I defined if A and B are in G, then A is related to B if um, A inverse B is in H right. This is the equivalence relation that we checked um, is an equivalence relation. So, what are the, the equivalence classes? and we discussed this I think equivalence class of A is all B in G such that A inverse B is in H, but this is same as A H because if A inverse B is in H, A inverse B is equal to small h. So, B is small a times h. So, B is related to 
b is related to a if and only if b is a times an element of h so this is just this set this set remember is my notation the definition is this right this is the definition so the equivalence class of a is simply a h and the most uh, uh, important definition now i want to give you is the following if h is a subgroup of uh, of a group uh, g the left cosets left cosets of uh, h are subsets so left cosets are simply you take an arbitrary element of the group and multiply by a h so left cosets are this similarly you can define right cosets and not surprisingly these are uh, subsets obtained by multiplying by a on the right h a or right cosets so left cosets are a h right cosets are h a so what we have done is for the equivalence relation of this uh, example for the equivalence relation above by which i mean the previous page a is related to b if a inverse b is in h for the equivalence relation the equivalence classes are simply left cosets correct so equivalence classes of this relation are the left cosets of h so uh, as i said the left cosets and right cosets are very important for us and uh, we will constantly keep dealing with them so you should carefully think about what they are Le and they are very simple really left cosets are subsets of the form ah and right cosets are subsets of the form h a and i will uh, do some examples in a later video to describe these in specific groups and hopefully that will become clearer to you then so now coming back to the equivalence relation that we are discussing for that equivalence relations the left cosets are the equivalence classes so now i want to do an important theorem this is the first important theorem really of the course and in order to prove that let me observe the following so we have noticed two facts we have noticed already one fact that since equivalence classes partition the set in our situation the left cosets of h in g partition g so left cosets of h are equivalence classes for an equivalence relation so they partition h which is to say this means g is the disjoint union of left cosets the word disjoint means that if you have two distinct left cosets they are disjoint they have nothing in common remember this is automatically true for us because of the property of equivalence classes for an arbitrary equivalence relation on an arbitrary set two equivalence classes are either equal or they are disjoint so in particular in our situation we are looking at a special equivalence class on a group and the equivalence classes are the left cosets so they partition the group so the group is the disjoint union of left cosets now let me prove an important proposition the number of elements so uh, fix uh, let h and g 
by which I mean G is an arbitrary group and H is a subgroup of G and let A be in G then the proposition says the number of elements then the number of elements in the left cosets le left coset A H is equal to to order of H uh, recall order of a group is simply the number of elements so order of a group is the number of elements of H remember I am not saying order of AH because AH is not a group AH is just a left coset so the number of elements of AH is equal to the number of elements of H that is a proposition and the proof is very simple <coughs> consider the map from H to AH given by a small h goes to small a times h this is a set map right this is a map of sets remember AH is actually nothing but a set it has no further structure it is just a subset of the group G it's a left coset it's a subset of group G so this is a map of sets give me an element to small h I'll multiply by a and map it to this this of course belongs to a capital H I claim that this is a bijective map why is this first of all is it on to is it on to yes because what are elements of a capital H uh, in the previous slide I wrote that right a capital H or a H as way H varies so you give me an element of a capital H that is of the form a times small h so h maps to that right so it is certainly on to by definition everything in a H is a multiple of something in a capital H is it 1 1 let's prove this suppose h1 goes to a h1 and h2 goes to a h2 let's suppose that they are equal a h1 equals a h2 but then the cancellation property of uh, groups that we have learned long time ago gives me that h1 equals h2 by cancelling a so it's 1 1 also so it's a bijective map if you have two sets which uh, there is a bijection between them that means they are the same number of elements so h and a h have the same number of elements right because if there is a bijection that is by definition that means they have the same number of elements now let's look at uh, see one thing that I should uh, mention here I should have been careful when I stated the proposition I'm going to assume that though it is also true in general G is a finite group because this is useful only in this situation G is a finite group so G has only finitely ele many elements in particular H has only finitely many elements because H is a subgroup of G so this proves the proposition right the proposition is proved now next we have two facts so let me draw a picture here so this is a group G you have cosets remember H itself is a coset because H is nothing but E H so that's one coset you have some other coset A 1 H some other coset some other coset and so on so you have several cosets and we have two facts the first fact is that G is the disjoint union of left coset so these cosets cover G so you have uh, this coset union this coset union this coset union this coset and so on is all of G 
and the previous proposition says that any two cosets have the same number of elements because if a h has same number of elements as h a 1 h has same number of elements as h but so does a 2 h a 2 h also has same number of elements as h this preposition works with an arbitrary element a of g so any two cosets have the same number of elements so now let us think about what could be the number of elements of g so we have g is a disjoint union of h union a 1 h union a 2 h a n h right, because g is a finite group remember that g is a finite group g is a finite group so it has finitely many cosets right because there are only finitely many elements this is my symbol for disjoint union so it is h union a 1 h union a 2 h union a n h how many elements so here remember n uh, let me denote this by a 2 because this is taken to be a 1 n is the number of number of left cosets of h in g n because a 1 h a 2 h a 3 h a n h it is the number of left cosets. So, n is the number of cosets that are distinct among all the cosets of h in g. So, now because g is partitioned by these cosets cardinality of g num number of elements of g which is the order of g is number of elements of let me use for simplicity the same symbol within vertical bars number of elements of g because g is a disjoint union of these things number every element of g is in exactly one of them right so number of elements of g is number of elements of this plus number of elements of a2h plus number of elements of a3h number of elements of a4h and so on so number of elements of g is equal to number of elements of eh number of elements of a2h number of elements of h a3h and finally number of elements of anh but by the proposition of the previous slide number of elements of a2h is also number of elements of h a3h is also number of elements of h anh is also number of elements of h it doesn't matter what cosets we are considering they are all h and how many factors here are there there are n terms right so cardinality of g is the cardinality of h added to it itself n times so we have that cardinality of g is equal to n times the cardinality of h and this leads us to state our first important theorem before that let me um, define the following number the number of cosets i am going to stick to left cosets for this calculation and for this theorem because everything that we have done is about left cosets the number of left cosets of a group h in g is called the index of h in g index of h in g is the number of left cosets of h in g it is denoted by this symbol g colon h in square brackets so the previous slide we ended with this statement cardinality of g is n times cardinality of h where n is the number of left cosets so i have given this a name now so we have a counting formula so this is a important counting formula in group theory we are going to encounter other counting formulas which are formulas to count elements of a group in various contexts the first example of counting formula is this order of a group is the index of the subgroup in h times order of h so this is the counting formula this is a very important formula that we have to use repeatedly in uh, 
our future videos so please play pay close attention to this and try to understand this carefully i have already proved this the previous work is a proof of this okay so if you not clear you should go back and listen to this again and convince yourself that we have the counting formula which says that cardinality of the group or order of the group is the index of h times order of h here h is a subgroup of g okay so as an immediate corollary of this i'm going to write a very important theorem follows immediately it's called the lagrange's theorem so this is one of the first important theorems in group theory again uh, i i keep repeating this at some point in this videos uh, i have started assuming g is a finite group so you can talk about cosets and equivalence relations always without assuming that g is a finite group but once i started counting number of elements i have assumed that g is a finite group so everything that follows is about finite groups for example the statement about counting formula is a statement for finite groups right because if g is not a finite group there is no sense in this statement because this is an infinite number then you can't write something like this so if g is a finite group you can make this so similarly lagrange's theorem is a statement about finite group so i will record that here let g be a finite group and let h be a subgroup of g then the order of h divides the order of g okay so written differently because the symbol for order is this order of h divides order of g this is as i said a very very important theorem in group theory and it gives you lot of flexibility in working with groups and why is the what is the proof immediately follows as i said from the counting formula because order of g is something times order of h we actually know what this number is but it's immaterial for the lagrange's theorem right this follows easily from the counting formula correct because um order of g is the product of order of h and something else so that means order of h divides order of g so i'm going to work out uh, some simple examples to illustrate this but pause for a minute here and then is think carefully about what lagrange's theorem is saying it says that if you have a finite group it it puts a major restriction on possible orders of subgroups immediately you can conclude that if for example if g is a group of order 6 for example s3 it can't have a subgroup of order 4 right because 4 does not divide 6 so that is what lagrange's theorem says okay so this is a our first application of the study of equivalence relations and left cosets it gave, gave us a very important result about orders of a finite group and orders of its subgroups